Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we are going to discuss about what are the most important tools and libraries that many data scientists use. So, based on the pipeline, suppose I discussed to you about data gathering, you know, feature engineering pipelines, which is also called as data analysis or data pre-processing, then model selection, model creation, then finally deployment, right? So, these were the short form of uh, basically the pipelines that we had actually discussed previously also. So, when I go to the data analysis state, this is basically my data pre-processing stage also, where I'll be doing a lot of stuff like feature engineering. Feature engineering basically means that I'll try to resolve the NAND values, missing values, try to make the data in the right format so that it will be useful for our model creation. So, over here, uh, the most important library is pandas because pandas you know you'll be able to read the data set you'll be able to create the data frames you'll be able to do a lot of operation within the pandas library then you have numpy you have matplotlib you have seaborn you have skypy and there are many more but these are the most important libraries that you have to consider during the data pre-processing or the data analysis stage which is also called as feature engineering if you want to again remember guys every project in a data science it's basically a machine learning project right data analysis or the feature engineering will be taking your 30 percent of the time of the project so suppose if your project is for three months one month will be basically going in feature engineering only you know because you have to do a lot of things in feature engineering make the data in the right format so if you are very good with pandas, if you are very good with numpy, if you know how to use visualization libraries like Seaborn or Matplotlib, because Seaborn in turns apply statistical analysis, you know, you'll be able to apply a lot of stuff because with the help of Seaborn, you'll be able to create histogram, you'll be able to see the distribution of the data, how it is. And based on that, you can come up with a solution with respect to normal distribution, standard normal distribution, uh, Z score and a lot of stuff. Okay. So this Seaborn library will be very, very important for that. Okay. Apart from that, matplotlib also helps you to create a very good two, two dimension and three dimension diagrams also. So if you want to be very, very good at feature engineering, you have to be focusing on this particular library. Now, how can you become an expertise? Again, come over here, guys. Here, your use case will get generated, right? All, all the use cases are here. Take an example from Kaggle. Take the data set over there. You will be finding a lot of missing values, a lot of stuffs, and there will be a lot of problem like imbalanced data set and all. Okay, select somebody's kernel, right? If you have not done for the first time, select, select, select somebody's kernel from the Kaggle itself. Try to solve it. Try to see how they have used pandas, numpy, matplotlib, seaborn. Specifically, they'll be using seaborn in most of the places because they have to do the statistical analysis. And by that, you will become perfect. You have to practice a lot for this because there will be different, different scenarios that will be coming up frequently. So as you practice more, that stuff you'll be able to do with the help of pandas and numpy. Okay, now that was about data analysis. Now let us come back to the machine learning and the deep learning part. Now in machine learning and deep learning part, as you know that most of the libraries in machine learning are present inside sklearn, which is also called as scikit-learn. It is basically the Oxford dictionary of all the machine learning algorithms. You will be able to find every machine, most of the machine learning algorithms in Skykit Learn. Now, remember guys, as I told you that, first of all, you need to understand how that particular algorithm works, okay? And once you understand the algorithm, you understand the maths behind it, it is not like you have to go and compute or you have to write very big lines of code. There will be some libraries which will be able to impl implement that particular algorithm and hardly you have to just write some 5 to 10 lines of code that whole algorithm will get implemented. Okay, so understand how the algorithm works. Try to use this particular library called as sklearn. Most of the algorithms are present. Some algorithm like xgboost, xgboost is available as a third uh, party package. You have to install it separately. But apart from that, most of the algorithms are present in the sklearn. The next library is basically called as TensorFlow. Now you know why TensorFlow is basically used for creating our deep learning models, right? Uh, TensorFlow uh, was initially, uh, means it was developed by Google. Now it has been given as an open source. So many people are basically using TensorFlow extensively to create a larger projects with respect to deep learning and all. Uh, apart from that, TensorFlow, you also have a Keras library. Now Keras is a wrapper of over, uh, on over TensorFlow, okay? It can be a wrapper on the, te uh, over, uh, I mean a wrapper over the TensorFlow and it can use the same technique of TensorFlow with very very ease because you'll be able to find out the methods how to create the neurons how to create the neural networks and many more things. Then you also have a new framework that have recently come which is called as PyTorch. Okay so these all libraries will basically be useful for machine learning and deep learning projects. Now after that let us go to the most important part where you'll be writing the code. 
so id and guys whatever i am discussing about over here is with respect to python okay i am not a uh, you know uh, expert in R programming language so I've not mentioned that but ex I, ha I have some kind of expert in Python so I'm mentioning all this uh, different libraries and tools uh, that will be useful for a data scientist now in ID you'll have to know Jupyter you have to know spider you have to know PyCharm so you you can you can basically select either spider or PyCharm but make sure that you know Jupyter how, how Jupyter basically works there is a reason because once we are doing the deployment of uh, the models or um, or we are trying to run our code in some AWS cloud, they have integrated Jupyter Notebook, okay? So you should know how to work with Jupyter Notebook so that you will be able to deploy then and there. Now, this was the ID part. For the visualization third-party tools, you can use Tableau and Power BI. Even I have also learned it, how to use Tableau and Power BI. Uh, this is important because this helps us to create a very, very good uh, statistical diagrams, uh, very good graphs. So we can basically use this. And it also provides a reporting server. So you can publish the reports to some server so that the stakeholder, other stakeholders can basically use it. Now, the most important part, that is the deployment. Now for deployment, guys, always remember, first of all, whenever you write any code, okay, then you try to commit in some uh, repository. It may be a Bitbucket, it may be GitHub, or it may be anything. A different type of repository will be there. And there, from there, a CI CD pipeline will get created for the deployment purpose. Okay, CI CD pi pipeline will be created for the deployment purpose. Now, one thing that you have to understand in order to create the REST API from models in the deployment stage, you have to know either Flask or Zango. Because Flask and Zango uh, helps you to create very good framework with respect to APIs. So you should know one of these, okay? And uh, why I'm saying you is that, is that because this same framework can be just deployed uh, in some other servers like AWS, Azure, or let it be Heroku, or it may be Docker, it may be Kubernetes. So in that, this Flask framework can be easily deployed, okay? It, it depends whether this is a platform as a service or infrastructure as a service, okay? But make sure that you know how to uh, create APIs with respect to Flask or Django, okay? So that you will be able to do the deployment part. Now, once your framework is created, all you have to do is that take your production server, wherever it is, you just deploy the same code over there, and just run that particular code, that particular API will always be available, okay? So one good news is that I'm going to make a tutorial or a playlist on deployment part. I'm going to use three to four tools like Kubernetes, uh, Docker, Heroku, uh, AWS, and Azure. I'll be showing you that. Uh, it'll just take some time for me, but most probably I'm going to start it uh, within this week itself, and I'll be deploying that, uh, I'll be showing, I'll be uploading that videos in the YouTube. Okay, so this was regarding the deployment. Make sure you know Flask, you know how to create web APIs and all. So that will be very, very helpful. So this was in short, all the libraries and the tools that I've actually discussed. And this is with respect to Python only guys, okay, Python. So I think this all libraries, everybody should know if you're becoming a data scientist. So I hope you like this particular video. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Thank you one and all.